You gotta be louder than that. Oh, yes, you can. I hear you talk to your friends sometimes. <laughs> and then Nasha, I can't talk that loud. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I stalked her. So that was you? <laughs> that was you. That was her. She did it. <laughs> and then Nasha, like, so, so you can do that? <laughs> okay, no, I'm just like, she didn't do that. I, I made it all. Okay, go for it, actually. Everything you own. Oh, yes, you can go get a prize over there. I want to get a prize. Huh? You want to get a prize? Well, you got to wait, okay? All right, but last week, we learned about Peter, right? So Peter was one of Jesus' disciples. And when Jesus came to Peter, right, he told them to follow him. And what happened? Peter left everything. Right? And he trusted Jesus when Jesus cast down the net. And what happened? What happened after that? He got a whole bunch he got, of fish. He got a boat load of fish on his jungle cruise, right? Yeah. This rock, this rock actually is like a rainbow rock. And he actually got a lot of fish because he listened to Jesus. And today we're going to kind of continue Peter's life. Okay, and he's going to actually do a little fishing today again, because Jesus actually calls him back, and we're not going to spoil that. But today, we're going to learn a lot of things, but we're going to go back to why he is called a rock, right? So Jesus looked at him, Peter, and said, you are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas. Okay, Cephas is Aramaic, which is translated to Peter. And what's the meaning of Peter's name? Who knows that one? Let me see. Uh, Eugene. Rock, right? The rock or rock. Okay, so Cephas, okay, which is Peter. Remember this, okay? I might ask you a question on this. Cephas is the Aramaic name for Peter. And Peter, Petros, is actually the Greek word of uh, Cephas. And Peter is just the English name of Petros. Okay, so there's a lot of names, but we call him Peter in this series, or The Rock, all right? So, with that said, today we're going to learn about God provide for our need. Okay, so before we get into that, we have a lot of needs. Actually, you know, I was preparing for the sermon, right? And I was like, what do kids need? Okay, I, I thought about this. And I'm like, these kids have a lot of things. They have video games. They have their own tablet. Some of you have even have your own phones. Right? Who has your own phone? Raise your hand if you have your own phone. What? L look at this. I never got my own phone until I was 21 years old, all right? How long you have your own phone? Where have you been living here? Look, back then, okay, we didn't have phones, but I don't know why you guys even need phones, all right? But anyway, can you raise your hand one more time if you have your own phone? Alright, if you don't have your own phone, good for you, okay? It's a good thing, alright? But if you have your own phone, I don't know, okay? You have too much, alright? And a lot of you have a lot of things. You have clothes, and if you want to eat, your parents wouldn't say, like, no, you cannot eat, or like, oh, we, we you know, we, they have plenty to eat, right? You guys have plenty to eat. I have plenty to eat, you can tell, right? Right? And we have all plenty to eat. We have school, we have education. We have a lot of things, and you're like, I don't need anything. My parents gave me everything. Isn't that right? Come on. We can be honest a little bit. And because this 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 uh, this this topic today is on needing God. Right? But you're like, I don't really need anything, because I have everything. My mom and daddy gives me everything, right? And they do. And maybe sometimes they don't give you everything you want, but you have most things that you want. You want to eat, you want to play, you want to do this, you want to do that, you want to go on vacation. Most of your parents have plenty to, to do that. So there are other things that we need. And I'm going to talk a little more about that today, okay? So, before that, let's uh, get into our What You Gotta Know, and let's see what this is going Yo, what's happening, you 
crazy cats. It's me, Disco Dave. And I'm here to tell you what you gotta know. Today, we're learning how God will provide for all our needs. So every time today you hear somebody ask you what you gotta know, you tell them. When I have a need, God will provide. Ooh, that's movie, dude. You mean whatever I want, God's gonna give to me? Uh, that's, uh, that's not exactly what I... Ooh, if that's right, I want me a pet zebra, I want a new boat, I want an airplane, I want three hang gliders, and two Big Macs. Whoa, 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 chill, dude. I didn't say he would provide for all you wanted. I said he would provide for what you need. He's gonna take care of you. Oh, well, that's even groovy. Because God knows what I need before I even ask. So every time today you hear somebody ask you what you gotta know, you tell them. When I have a need, God will provide. Is that right there? What you gotta know? Well, I'm Disco Dave saying, God don't mind. God don't mind. God don't mind. All right, can we all stand up at this time? God don't mind. All right, let's all stand. We're going to go over our what you got to know right now. It says, when I have a need, God will provide. Ready? Let's, on, let's say it on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. When I have a need, God will provide. All right, you know what? We're going to try this side first, okay? You're going to do the first part. You're going to do the second part, okay? So you guys say, when I have a need, you guys say, God will provide. Ready? One, two, three. When I You know what? Let's go back this way. Let's do this way and then this way. Ready? One, two, three. When I have a need, God will provide. Right, let's see which side is louder. Okay, let, let's try this side first again. Ready? One, two, three. When I have a need, God will provide. You guys, second part should be louder than the first because when we have a need, God will provide. Okay, can, can you do like with the pumped about this? Okay, let's try. You guys got it? Second part? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, ready? Ready? When I have a need. Ready? One, two, three. When I have a need. God! God! There we go. That's it. That's what I want to hear. I like that. Okay, keep standing because we're going to read our um, Bible verse of the week. Okay, the power verse. And God will generously provide all you need. Second Corinthians 9, 8. Can you say it? One, two, three. And God will generously provide all you need. Actually, do you remember we had a rap on that one? Okay. Who remembers that one? God will generously provide all you need. Because he will give you everything you need. Wait, yeah, that's, that not, but, the anyway, that's not me, but all right, you can be seated now. All right, sit down, sit down. God will generously provide all you need, not some of what you need. And notice, this Bible verse doesn't say, God will generously provide all you want. Right? It doesn't say that. It says what you need. Need and want is very different. You really don't need a phone. You really don't. You really don't need an iPad, all right? You really don't need even a computer, all right? You really don't need a TV. You really don't need a lot of things, okay? I, I mean, yeah, don't want that. Yeah, you don't need those things. You want those things, right? But those are not needs. And today we're going to talk a little more about needs, all right? But let's pray, and then we're going to get into God's Word. I'm not sure you invite Peter up here, okay? But let's pray, let's pray. Uh, Father God, thank you so much for today. Uh, Lord, may you speak to us at this time. God, we ask that you would just fill us with your spirit, Lord God, as we hear your word today. God, that you may speak to every single one of us, Lord God. God, I know we have a lot of things, Lord God. Our parents have a lot. We have... Uh, a lot of things that we already need, Lord God, even the wants we can, Lord God. So, Lord, help us to know what we need, Lord God, so that you can provide generously for us, Lord God. So speak to us deeply in our hearts, Lord God, not just the things we want, but, Lord, really the things that's necessary 
things that matters to you, Lord God. So God, be with us today. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so let's get started. So last week, if you remember, we have Peter up here, right? I'm just going to move this for a second. So uh, when he comes up, he's going to come in a second. Uh, he actually told us all about the first time he uh, met Jesus, right, on the boat. And he talked all about that. And today I'm going to invite him to tell us a little more about what happened after that, all right? So let's welcome Peter, shall we? All right, everyone say, come on out, Peter. Come on out, Peter. Oh, yes. Hello, everyone. Hello. Shalom again, everybody. It's good to see everyone. Shalom. shalom. Everyone say, shalom, Peter. Shalom. 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 One, two, three. Shalom, shalom Peter. Oh, it is good to see you guys, yes. Let me just put this down here. Yeah, so yes. it's good to see you again, Peter. Yes, 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 thank yes. you for joining us last week and now this week. Yes. Uh, and the next, I don't know how many more weeks, seven more oh, weeks. Oh, right? oh, we're just, doing uh, more, yes? Yes, we okay. are. Okay. As long as you're okay. Yeah, no problem, no problem. Actually, I do remember about last week. It was yeah. a great time. I told you guys about the, how I first met Jesus. It was so great. And actually, there was more to it. After that, we went on more and more travels, and we gathered more disciples, and Jesus performed so many miracles. And every single time, it was amazing. It was just unbelievable. It was just amazing each and every time. And don't forget, myself, my brother, the other disciples, we were ordinary guys. We were just regular men. Yeah. It was amazing every time. Yeah, you were just a fisherman, but... Yes. He just call you Fisher the Men. And oh, and yes, you were able yes. to evangelize to over how many people that first time? 3,000 oh, people. Oh, and yes, yes, that's yes. Amazing. Great yeah. amount. So, yeah, so thank you for joining us again. And I, I can't imagine what it's like being with Jesus, like following him for three and a half years. But let's get yes, right yes. into it, yeah? Yes. We can so talk to, about that later. Yeah, yeah. So today, today, uh, well, before we get into that, today, our, what you got to know is when I have a need, God will provide. So oh. can you talk about a time where like um, God provides for us? Okay, okay. Wow, that is a really weird word. What's that? What, what, what you call it? What you say? How do you say that? What is that? What, what you gotta know? What you gotta know? What you yeah, gotta yeah, know? Yeah, okay. What you call it? Not I, what you gonna call it? No, what, oh. what you gotta know? Yeah. Oh yeah, what you gonna call it? Yeah, yeah, no, okay. no, 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 no. Oh, so <laughs> when we have the God will provide. So can you tell us a time when God provided for you? Hmm. Well, there were many times, but the, a really famous one, a good one. Uh, you guys know about how Jesus fed the five thousand people. Yeah. You've heard about that. But, well, we kind of talked about that a lot of times. I think. Kind of know oh, that story, you know, yeah. with the five loaves you know, of bread and the two fish. You know Jesus. that story. How many of you know that story? You guys heard of that? Oh, Are you sure? Story, yeah. Oh my goodness, everybody heard it. Oh, yes. oh well, there's a few more. You know, Jesus provided a lot for us. Oh, ha -ha! we have a very, I have a good one. I have a very good one. I don't know if you've heard this story yet. I don't know if you've taught this to the kids. It's this one where actually myself and Jesus, we had to pay temple tax. We had to pay tax. We had to have money. Did you did you talk about this? I actually never taught this. Oh, ever. you have not. Ever. 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 Actually, ever. 12 years ago, I never taught that story. So Peter, while you're here, can you tell us what happened that day? I never taught that story. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. That's so let's, let's get into it. Yeah. Let's get into it. Yeah. So in the Bible, it says in the book of Matthew, okay? In the book of Matthew, it's chapter 17. Verse 24, that's oh. where it starts. And uh, that was his Bible. You know yeah. the Bible. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Matthew, it's funny because Matthew wrote about how myself and Jesus, we had to pay tax. Yeah. And Matthew was a tax collector. Ah. So, so we kind of got this there. It's very funny. But let's look here. Let's, uh, let's see what it says, okay, now? All right. All right. So let us see. Let us read this. After Jesus and his disciples arrived in Capernaum, the collectors of two drachma temple tax came to Peter, came to me and asked, doesn't your teacher pay the temple tax? Ah, uh, yeah, so this is when Jesus and us, the disciples, we arrived in Capernaum and he went to rest a little bit. But then some tax collectors came to me and they asked, if Jesus pays temple tax. 
it's kind of, I, was, I did not know what to say. I was very worried. I did not know what to say. Uh, Peter? Yeah, Peter? Yeah. Um, can I ask you a question? Hey, can I ask you a question? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. So what is the temple tax and what is, uh, what is it, dra dra drachma? Drachma. Drachma. <laughs> yes. how, how do you say that word? Drachma. Drachma. Yes. Yes. Drachma. 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 Oh. Yes. What Let is me... that? What in the world is drachma? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Let me explain. So at that time, if you were a D Jewish man, you had to pay a yearly tax to the temple. So Jewish would have to pay for the temple and also, uh, you know, uh, another tax. But then for the temple, uh, it was to take care of the temple, the building, and pay for the, you know, taking good care of it. So every year we would have to pay it uh, Jewish male men from the ages 20 to 50. We would call it the true, the two drachma uh, tax. Drachma yes, and drachma is just the kind of money we use. There were other kinds of money, but this was just one of many. Like um, like you guys here in America, you use the, um, what is it, the USD? The US, the US, what is it? Um, the USD, you mean? Oh. The US, <laughs> United States dollar, oh. USD, not USD. Oh. Not USD, I not know. whatever you said, not yeah. USD, okay? It's, USD. Okay? USD. Yes, yes, the it. dollar. Yes. Dollar. So dollar. I guess that's the drachma. Yes, okay. yes. That's what okay. we had. Uh -huh. yeah, okay. And uh, that's what we used at that time. I see. But I did not know uh, what to say. And uh, the problem was, we had no money. We did not make any money. We did not keep any money with us. We left our jobs. I was a fisherman, right? Oh, but then yeah, yeah. I left that life. Uh, the other disciples, they had jobs. They left their jobs. Yeah. And Jesus, we did not work for money. We just went as we went. So I was worried. How are we going to pay the tax? This and that. Yeah. But uh, I just said, Hey, can yeah. I ask you a question? Yes. So how did you pay the tax? Oh, you yes, yes, no yes. money. You had to pay the two tax. Oh. Yeah. So I will explain very soon. Okay. Sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. But so basically I said, yes, Jesus does pay. You said yes? <laughs> Yes, I don't know why I said, yeah, I said, it says in the scripture, can we check the next? Oh, okay. Yeah, so yes, it does. Oh, no, right. Right. I said, yes. Uh, okay. Yes, later you'll okay. see, sorry, very sorry, interesting. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Oh, so yes, right here it says, when Peter came into the house, Jesus was the first to speak. What do you think, Simon, he asked. And the uh, next part, may we see? From whom do the kings of the earth collect duty and taxes from their own children? Or from others and uh, that was amazing because Jesus just I was worried I was like oh my goodness how am I gonna pay the tax like uh, we don't have money and I came to the house Jesus was at and boom he asked me about tax wow. yeah. so he knew he must have known he you must didn't have tell him about tax I, I just you. I just came in he must have came, he must have known that I talked to tax collectors. It was, wow, I was like, wow, That's Jesus, great. he knew. So anyways, uh, so yes, yeah, so I answered Jesus and I did say from others. I did say, yes, from others, I answered, oh, oh. Then the children are exempt, Jesus said to him, said to me, oh, it does to mean that the children, they would not pay the taxes of their own. But then that's why they would tax like other people like us. Uh, like like other. K, K wouldn't tax, tax their own kids, yes, yes. Right? but others. They would tax the men uh, and the other people. Okay. So we have to pay. Okay. Uh, this is the good part. This is a really good part. Now watch this. Watch what this. You, what did you say? Oh, you said. Yeah, so I said <laughs> from others. Now Jesus told me something very cool. Watch this. Uh, but so that we may not cause offense, Go to the lake and throw out their line. And then he said that another thing. He told me to take the first fish that you catch and open its mouth and you will find a four drachma coin, coins. Take it and give it to them for my tax and yours. Wait, what? Yes. You, you did it. So you Threw out the fishing line. Yes, yes, did yes, you, yes. Did you catch it? Yeah, yeah, it actually, it happened. So watch this, actually, we have a little moment prepared for you. I want to catch a fish in front of you guys, okay? What? Now watch. Yeah. Yes, now I'm right here, right now. This is why I have my fishing rod, okay? There's no water. 
Oh, well, this is my leg, right over here. Oh, okay. okay. Now everybody <laughs> watch, okay? <laughs> oh, so, too. Oh, cool. Okay, now I went down to the lake and I began to just cast my fishing line, okay? Okay. Okay, now watch. So, I cast my line looking for fish. Just like usual, just like usual. I used to fish, I knew what I was doing, so I was like, okay, I catch a fish, Jesus, okay? No problem, look, it's me, Peter, uh -huh. Okay, and then, um, you know, you have to wait a little bit for the fish. Yeah, how long you uh, wait? I don't know, I probably waited a little bit. Uh, yeah, it took some time, I was like, hmm. But the first fish, I was thinking about what Jesus said. I was very, like, not sure, I was like, hmm. Jesus, fish, I will do it, I will do it. And oh, then, uh, oh, oh, wait, oh, oh, Peter. and then, uh, oh, and then, uh, oh, yeah, we got the fish. What is going on? What is going on here? I don't think it was this strong. Okay, what is going on here? This fish is like crazy. Oh my goodness, what did you eat for breakfast? Oh, for real? Oh. Okay, hold on. Okay, oh man, I'm going to lose it. I can't make much. Jesus, I need the money. Okay, okay, fish, come on out. Come on out, to fish, come on out. Oh, oh, oh. oh. It was it was this small, but it was oh. amazing because what's oh. this? So what what's inside? Okay, so is there a coin inside? Yeah, let me check really quick. So this fish, uh, hmm. <laughs> oh my goodness! Huh? Would you look at that? What? Okay, I know you guys. Are oh wait. Oh. Yeah. So okay, I'll just let you guys see. Then we found the coins inside uh -huh. the fish. Okay, How you many? guys just stay where you are. There is not one coin, not two, not three, but four. Four coins, exactly. What, what kind of coin again? You guys remember? Drachma. There we go. Drachma. Yeah. Okay, guys, you can say that to your parents later. <laughs> so you really found four coins in the fish, just as Jesus said. That's right. It was amazing. I, I've never seen that before, finding coins in a fish's mouth. And you must have seen. The look of the tax collector's face when I brought the fish and the coins to him. I think we have uh, the picture, yes. <laughs> oh my. It was amazing. That's nasty. Yeah, it, I mean, yeah, but. I would not want to be that tax collector. <laughs> I was just so amazed and grateful that the Lord did provide for us. The Lord provided. I just remembered that again. That we did, remember, we did not make money. We were worried. But Jesus provided money for us. And it is just like you said in the, uh, what do you say? Or the, whatchamacallit, what, 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 what was it? Whatchamacallit, what, what is it, guys? Whatchamacallit, what, 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 yes. What yes. Where it was, when I have a need, God will provide, and God truly provided for us. You want to have them say it together, maybe? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah let's Together with you? Okay, yeah. yeah. All right, let's try it together with Peter, ready? One, two, three. When I have a need, God will provide. How about this, Peter? Man. While you're here, yes. why don't you say the first part and the kids are going to shout the second part? Oh, sure. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Yes. That sounds great, everybody. Okay. Right, ready, guys? Come on. Show Peter what you got. All okay. Right? Let me try. Okay, everybody. Let me say it. When I have a need, God will provide. Amen. 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 That was That's so great. Good. Yeah. Thank yes. you so much, Peter. Wow, that need for paying those taxes that yes. Jesus provided for you. Ah. Yes, yes, yes. This was it was a very God showed me in a creative way because I was a fisherman. And Jesus made me fish for it. <laughs> wow. So that was That's amazing. Really Thank that you so amazing. much, Peter, for showing us the story and like wow, that fishing was uh, really crazy, huh? Yeah, yeah, no problem, no problem. It was really fun. Alright, so that was scary. That was scary. <laughs> <laughs> he enjoyed it. All right, but I guess we'll see you next week. Oh, yes. Uh, I guess I will be here for a few weeks to tell about yeah, my yeah, story. Yeah, yeah. Okay, no problem. Yeah. Sounds great. Uh, I will see you guys next week. It was great showing you guys this story. Now you know. Now you know, okay? All right, I'm going to say bye, Peter. Okay. Bye, Peter. Goodbye, everyone. Shalom, everybody. Shalom, shalom. Let's give him a hand. Thank you for joining us.
All right, so let's get right into it. That was really, really fun. Okay, I really enjoyed that. Peter is awesome, right? So let's get, let's kind of discuss that 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 story. Okay, so they had a need. Okay, so Jesus and Peter, they didn't really have money, right? But Jesus actually didn't have to pay that tax. And when he said, "Who's supposed to pay the tax? The people or the children?" What did Peter say? Others, right? Not the children. If Jesus is is God's son, God is the head of the temple. He shouldn't have to pay tax. But he said, "You know what? We don't want to cause offense to everyone because he's like, we're just gonna pay. But we don't have money. But Peter, why don't you go fish for money? Right? Fish. The first fish you get, there's gonna be the four drachma coin." Right? And you're gonna get to pay the tax for me and for you. And what happened? He got the fish, and those four coins were provided to pay those taxes. So the need for Peter at that time was the money, and the the, the one that who provided was who? It was Jesus? It right? was God? Okay. And I want to talk about this. Okay. So I want to talk about these three points. Number one is this. When you have a need, come to Jesus first. Many times, you want to go to people, you want to go to, you know, uh, other people or your parents, right? But you need to go to God and ask Him, okay? Because what did Peter do? Peter actually went to Jesus. He had no idea how to pay it, but he went to Jesus first. So, second point is this: God knows what you need before you ask. Did you know that? God actually knows what you need before you even ask Him. How do I know that? Well, we saw in Peter's story. He says, "Go, take a fish." Because Peter didn't say, "Oh, we need money. We need money to pay." In fact, Jesus already knew, right, what his need was. And, and Peter, uh, what, what did Jesus say? Take the first fish you catch, open his mouth, and you will find four drops of coin. Take it and give them for my tax and yours. Right? Jesus provides even before you ask. And look at this verse, Matthew 6, 8. It says, For your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. How crazy is that? If you look in the Bible many times, Jesus would answer somebody before they even ask. Right? Remember Nicodemus came to Jesus right, at night? Right? And then Jesus says, For truly I tell you to have eternal life. And, and He would answer uh, answer Nicodemus before Nicodemus even asked the question. How do you have, how can you have eternal life? Nicodemus didn't ask, but he thought about it, and Jesus answered. And many times in the Bible, if you look in the Bible, Jesus would answer, right? Thomas, remember Thomas? When he came, when, when, when he didn't see Jesus, he, 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 he saw Jesus, and then Jesus said, don't be afraid, right? Don't be afraid. You want to see my hands and my feet? You want to see proof? Come, touch, touch my hands. Right? Remember Thomas said, I'm not going to believe until I touch the scars in his hands. Right? And Jesus wasn't even there. Right? And then when Jesus showed up, he said, Thomas, come, touch. But Peter, uh, not Peter, Thomas didn't ask Jesus, like, can I touch? No. Jesus knew before people would ask, right? And last thing I want to show you is this. God will provide. Can I want to say God will provide? God will provide. This is where I want to spend more time on. Like, what does God provide? That I have everything. Let me tell you something. If you have everything, you need to be thankful that you have things. Let me say it again. You have to be thankful that you have things. Let me tell you something, boys and girls, because you are taking this for granted. Your mom and dad has a job, not because they're just good, because they're smart. Can I tell you something? It's because God provided that for them. God provided that job for them. God gave them wisdom, gave them strength to go through school, go through hardship, and you guys have it easy. Some of you, you don't know your, your, your mom and dad's blood and sweat and tears that they have to go through to be able to provide this for you. And you're just like, yeah, I have it. 
You know, they have this job. They, 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 they got everything. They got a big house. They have cars. And we are set. We don't need anything. Let me tell you something. God can give and God can take it away. I'm going to say it again. God can give and God can take it away. And we need to be thankful for everything that we have right now. Some of you, I'm just going to say it. You're spoiled. Yeah? You're like, I know. If you say, I know, you are definitely, okay? Listen, you just, you need to realize that God provided everything for your family. Everything belongs to you, doesn't belong to you. Doesn't belong to your parents, like I said. It belongs to God. And this is why we need to be thankful and grateful for food, for clothes, for education, for our shelter, for our transportation, for our church. Let me tell you, like, I think us here in this church, like, I would say, um, I, I would even go to 100% of us here. We have more than what we need. But let me tell you outside, for those who are less fortunate, all right, or le they have less money, a lot of them, they're, they're going just meal by meal. So maybe some of you sitting here too, I, I don't know, okay, I can't say 100%. Okay, I'm sorry, I'll take that back. But some people might go, some of your parents might even go paycheck to paycheck. Some of them maybe, they are struggling to provide, and you have no idea. And there's a lot of people out there, they are struggling to even find, to, to have three meals on, on the table. I, I read an article, I don't remember, it was recently, it was like 47% of America, I, I don't know how accurate that is, they said, without the stimulus check, you know, the, the bonus money that they got, without that, they weren't able to provide meal every single day for their family. I'm like, wow, really? 47%? That means like half the people? I, I don't know how accurate that is, but some people really have a desperate need of things, and you have it good. But let me tell you something. Even though you have clothes, you have phone, you have iPad, you have house, you have car, you have everything, we still need God. We still need God, amen? Just because you have physical things, you need some spiritual things. Let me tell you something. I thought about it long and hard. I'm like, these kids don't need money. These kids don't need clothes. These kids don't need food. These kids don't need physical things. But you need spiritual things. Inside, we're, I, I would say, outside you guys are well fed. But inside, maybe some of you, not so much. Spiritually hungry. Spiritually starving. Right, like, like if I show you like kids in, other places where they don't even have meals, like they have one meal maybe every week, right? Like they don't have meal every day. And they, they, you see their bones, right? You see their skull. I don't see it like, like you guys. You guys are all well fed, right? But inside, maybe some of us are like that. But let me tell you, God will be all your needs according to his riches of glory in Christ Jesus. But watch this. I, I, I want to kind of all on this, and I'm going to show you some things that we all need, okay? If you remain in me, and my word remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciple. You're like, I can ask whatever I wish, then God will give it to me, if I remain in God's word? Yes. You're like, wait, that means I can ask for all the video games in the world? Let me tell you something. If you really 
remain in God's word. That means you spend time with God, loving God, seeking God for what He wants. You're not going to ask for those things. You're not going to wish for things that pleases you. Because when you ask for things, a lot of times you want to make it be pleasing to you, to satisfy you, to make you happy. But when you start spending time with God, when you start loving God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, you're not going to ask for selfish things. I'm going to say it again. You're not going to ask for selfish things when you start really spending time with God, to love God with everything that you have. You're going to ask for different things. You're not going to ask for self-pleasure items, right? You're going to start asking for things, right? You're going to start asking for wisdom. You know what? If you have all the things in the world, it doesn't matter. If you don't have wisdom, knowing the right thing to do, the thing that pleases God, then these things don't really matter. Let me go back to the drachma tax. Can I tell you? Rich people, poor people, they pay the same tax. But that's not fair. Rich people should pay more because they have more. That shows rich people, poor people, are actually equal in the sight of God. Let me say it again. Poor people, rich people, are the same in the sight of God. Because when Jesus died on the cross, he died for everyone. Right? For the poor, for the rich, for the sick, for the healthy, for everyone. And we're all going to die one day. And guess what? Those mansions, those Ferraris, those, uh, those uh, what is it, Lamborghinis, those, uh, those people who have like billions of dollars, it's not going to matter. We can't take any of that. Right? We can't take any of that to heaven. We're all equal in the sight of God. Right? And when we start asking God, He's going to start giving you wisdom. Okay? If you lack wisdom, ask God and He will give you generously. And let me give you three things. I thought about these three things, what we need. When we're sad, money cannot buy you happiness. It can't. You're like, yes, it can. I can buy a thousand dollars Robux and I'll be happy. No, not really. Not really. What does that do? What does that do for your life? Does Robux make you like smarter? Does it make you uh, I don't know, look better? Does it does it help you like what would God say? Wow! You have one thousand robux to buy whatever roll mansion or whatever you call it. I, I don't know those terms. Okay? You buy skins, okay? You got, you know, like, that's nasty, right? You buy skins, okay? You know what I mean, right? Those avatar, whatever. God's not gonna say, "Wow, that's so cool." Amen? Amen? There is no one in 
the world get, that can provide this for you? Not my friends, not my family even, okay? It's only God who can provide this for me. Do you understand this? It's only God who can give you this. And if you say, I don't need it, then I would say, all right. Okay. Try finding elsewhere. What's that? You can't. Try finding outside other than God. It's not going to work. But it's only God who can fill our needs, provide all you need. If you are blank, you know what God said? When Moses said, when, 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 when Moses met, met God in the burning bush, you know what God said? You know what his name was? He said, I am. And then Moses was probably, I am what? <laughs> he says, I am. That's God's name. That's one of God's name, I am. What does that mean? What? You fill in the blank. I am joy. I am peace. I am love. And you can fill in whatever need that you need because he is the I am, the great I am. Whatever blank, I need blank, he is that. And he can provide it for you. Amen? Do you understand this? Is it too hard for you? I don't know if this is too hard for you, but he is the I am. You fill in that blank. You need, you need food on your table. I am your provider. I am your peace. I am your joy. If you need comfort, I am your comforter. You're sick. I am your healer. Let's close our eyes right now. I don't know what you need today. Definitely, I would say, not food, not clothes, not an iPhone, not entertainment. But what do you really need inside? What are you starving for on the inside? Inside you. Like you might look healthy on the outside, but let's take a look at deep inside. Are you hiding your sadness? I remember when I was little, I didn't want to tell my mom anything. Not even my mom. I, I don't want to tell her anything. I didn't want to tell my friends anything. And I would keep it all inside. And the sad thing is this. I just kept it inside. I didn't know God. I didn't know there was God. That could provide for all my needs. When I was stressing about school, when I was worried about bullies, when I feel unworthy, unloved, when I felt lonely, I didn't know what to do. But you know, God is your provider, and He can fill all you need. You can fill every single thing that you need. So right now, with all eyes closed, come on, eyes closed. What do you really need inside? Maybe some of you are like, I'm so shy. You know, I'm scared of people. I don't want to talk to people. Maybe you're like, but I, I want to. I'm scared. Or maybe some of you, like, maybe some of your parents, might, they might have lost their job too. And you can say, God, can you help them? Maybe you're, you do need things. They don't know how to pay the rent for next month. I don't know. Or maybe some of you are sad deep inside. You feel lonely. You might have a lot of friends, but you still feel lonely. And at the end of the day, maybe some of you are like, why do I feel so sad? Maybe it's the way you treat people. Maybe the way you talk to people. 
because God didn't design you to be mean to others. God designed you to love others, to love one another. So can you just tell God right now, God, I need you. I need you. Help me. Help me to love others. Help me to say nice things to others. And one thing I think we all need is this. We need God's power to help us to stop sinning. Am I right? We're all sinners. And we all go through things. Maybe our thoughts, maybe our words, maybe our actions. We need God to help us. Before I pray for you, with all eyes closed, all heads bowed, don't look around. As you're praying right now, how many of you know you need something inside? You need only God can fill your needs. If that's you, can you put a hand on your heart right now as a sign and say, you know, I need God. I know there's nothing, no money, no one that can help me besides God who can fill me with this problem, who can help me in this problem. If that's you, just put a hand on your heart, and I want to pray for you. God, I just pray for these hands today. God, we have a need. Not, maybe not an outside need, but an internal need, a spiritual need. God, we need you, Lord God, because without you, nothing is possible, Lord God. Everything, Lord God, everything is only possible through you. So God, we ask that you would just touch our hearts, Lord God. Help us to recognize, Lord God, you are the great I am, that you can fill all of our needs, Lord God. And Lord, you will provide all of our needs because of your glorious riches, Lord God. And Lord, if any of us lack wisdom, you will give us generously, Lord God, of those who ask you, Lord God. So Lord, we ask for wisdom today, the right thing to do, the thing that you want us to do, Lord God. So Lord, we honor you, Lord God. We lift up your name today, Lord God. So Lord, this week, if there's a need, Lord, we just come to you, who is our provider. Lord God, if we're sad, Lord God, may you give us joy. If we are worried, Lord God, may you give us peace, Lord God. If we feel unloved, unworthy, uh, feel lonely, Lord God, that we, we ask you for your love, Lord God, that you will fill us with your love. And if those who are sick, Lord God, that you will be their healer, Lord God, you will comfort them, Lord God, you will give them uh, just uh, health, Lord God, so Lord, that they will recover fast, Lord Jesus. So Lord, we thank you for being our provider. Thank you for being our uh, love and everything that we need, Lord God. We love you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can we give God a clap offering for being our need right here?